Today we're gonna build a JavaScript chat app and what this is gonna allow us to do is it's gonna be a widget that will go into a website. This widget is gonna show us how to create a user, send messages to other users, and we're also gonna show you how to authenticate those users using Google Firebase. Once you've created a folder for the project where you'll be working on this tutorial from, we're gonna set up a certain folder structure. First, you're gonna have a CSS folder here, which is gonna contain the files for all of our styling. So in my case, I've put a styles.css file within the CSS folder. Then we're gonna have an image folder, which is gonna contain all our images. Next, we'll have a JS folder, which will contain all of our JavaScript. Then we'll have a screenshots folder, which is gonna be the images that will be found in the readme.md file. Then we'll have a fav icon file, which will be the little file that you'll see in your tab on the top of your browser when you're using this. Then we'll have an index.html file, which is the main page that the user will end up on when they start the application. We'll also have a login.html file, which will be displayed when users need to log into the application. We will have a git ignore file. However, if you're not committing your project to GitHub, this is probably not needed. We'll also have a readme.md file. However, again, if you're not committing this project to your GitHub repo, you do not need this file. Now that we've finished setting up our project structure, we're gonna start installing some dependencies that we'll need to make this app work. First command we're gonna run is npm install dash g http server. This package allows you to set up a simple HTTP server so you can serve all of your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. Once you've installed this package, you can actually run this by just typing HTTP dash server. And as you can see, you now have your own local server running so that you can test your application when we're building it. The next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to log into your comment chat dashboard and we'll need to create a new app. We're just gonna call our app JavaScript chat app. Next, you're gonna select the region that you wanna use. In my case, I'm just gonna simply select Europe. However, it will probably differ based on where you're located. For the technology, we're just simply gonna choose other. And for the use case, you can just do other as well. And then we're just gonna click add app. Once you've finished creating your app, you'll be able to go to your apps dashboard and you'll find your newly created app here. So in my case, JavaScript chat app. So we can click on this. From here, you see the dashboard for your newly created app, which is where you can see things like your chat widgets, the analytics, the API and auth keys and also the users and the roles and groups. From here, however, we just need to go into our chat widgets area and we're gonna click on this new chat widget. Once you've created your chat widget, you'll see a bunch of credentials on the right-hand side here, which we'll need to take note of as we're going to refer to them later in our project. Okay, from here, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a config file for our application. The config file is where we're gonna store all our auth keys and API keys and et cetera that we'll need to authenticate the app with this. In order to access the comment chat widget in our application, we'll need to access the things like the API key and the project ID and the app ID that I've referred to just now. From here, we're gonna create a config file, which is gonna be the root configuration for our app. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this JS folder and we're gonna create a new file called config.js. From here, you're gonna set up a config variable which is gonna contain a bunch of information that we'll need so we can authenticate our comment chat widget with our application. You can copy and paste the example from the comment chat website on this tutorial. Basically what you will need is most of this information here as we're going to refer to it with the keys that I've mentioned earlier. From here, you wanna refer back to your comment chat widget that you just created. Next, we're gonna set up Google Firebase for our project. Google Firebase is a backhand platform provided by Google for building full stack applications. It provides programmers with authentication options, storage, databases, hosting, A-B testing, and etc. What's cool about Firebase is it allows us to focus on developing the front end of our applications while it does the hidden jobs for us in the back end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project from Firebase, and we're just gonna call this one JavaScript chat. We can disable Google Analytics for this project and we'll just wait for it to do its thing. When you finish adding Firebase to your web app, you're gonna see that there's this config file here that we'll need to take note of. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of this code right here and we're just gonna copy it. Then we'll need to go back into VS Code and click on the config file that we created earlier. You'll notice that there are a bunch of these codes here and we're just gonna replace some of the values with what we've got from our Firebase web app that we just created. Your config file should look something similar to this once you've added all your keys and replaced them with the original 
values that came with the config file. You'll also want to double check that all of your comet chat keys are also matching with the ones you created with your comet chat widget initially. We're now going to set up the config for our Firebase app. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file in the JS folder and we're just simply going to call it firebase.js. We're then going to copy and paste the code that comes from the tutorial by simply going to the tutorial page. We're then going to copy the firebase.js file example that comes from the tutorial on comet chat's website. So we're just going to grab all of this and we're going to copy that and go back into VS code and we're going to paste all of that into our firebase.js file. As you can see here, the firebase.js file is simply referencing all the API keys that come from our config file. Then what happens next is if there's a Firebase app available, it will initialize the Firebase app and then it will also initialize the real-time database and the Firestore and the authentication as well as the storage. Now that we've set up our config file and our firebase.js file, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create the login screen for our front end of the application. In the tutorial, you'll see that there's this login.html file that we can use for our project. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this entire HTML folder and we're simply going to go back into VS Code and we're going to click on the login.html file that we created at the beginning of our project. And we're just going to paste our code in here. What you have essentially done here is you've created the front end for your login page and also integrated the comment chat widget. And you've also referenced the scripts and the config files that we created, such as our Firebase file. So now that we've added the, so now that we've added the login page and we've referenced our Firebase and config files, we still need to actually reference our auth.js file. So we're going to create one now. On the tutorial, there's actually an auth.js file example that you can use to help, to help get this done quickly. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this example here and we're going to go to our JS folder and we're going to create a new file. It's going to be called auth.js and you're just going to paste your code here. What's happening here is that you're actually using the comment chat widget and you're initializing it by using the comment chat widget app ID, the app region and the authentication key. It's then going to send a request to the server. If everything comes back all good, we'll then get comment chat to log in that user. And if all goes well, we will then redirect to the home page. If it fails, however, we'll go back to the login page. Now that we've created our auth.js file, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our util.js file. The reason we need a util.js file is because some functions can be used across multiple pages in the app, such as showing or hiding the loading indicator or getting information for the authenticated user. To avoid double references of this, we're going to store all common functions in a single file. On the tutorial, there's an example for the util.js file that we can actually use. So we're just simply going to copy that. We're then going to open our JS file, create a new file and call it util.js. And we're going to paste it in there. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to create a login.js file. The login.js file will be responsible for handling the business logic for the login page. This file is what will contain the functions that will allow a user to register a new account and log into the application. For the login.js file, there's actually an example that we can use from the GitHub repo. I would recommend opening that link, which will be provided in the description below. And I would just copy this entire file within login.js on the GitHub repo and we're going to paste it into our login.js file that we'll create in VS Code. Create a new file in your JS folder called login.js. Paste the code that we just copied. Now what's actually happening here is this register new account function is what is called after clicking the sign up button. It then accepts a JSON object as a parameter containing the user's information, such as their email address and password, as well as the confirmation of their password. Before proceeding, the user's information is validated using this validate new account function. If the information is valid, the user's avatar and unique ID will be generated. The application then registers a new user with the Firebase authentication service, as well as comment chat using the comment chat widget SDK. Next, we're going to create the homepage for our app. In the tutorial, there's an example for the index.html file that we're going to use. So all you need to do is copy the code from it and you're going to go to the index.html file that you created at the start of this project and you're actually going to paste it in here. Next, we need to create an index.js file. So we're going to go into the JS folder and we're going to create a new file and we're just going to call it index.js. We're then going to refer to our tutorial and we're going to copy and paste the index.js file that is in here. We're then going to paste it into our index.js file. Now that we've finished creating everything, it's time to test our app and see if it works. At the start of the video, we installed a package.http server. So we're going to run the command http server. My local server has started. So then we just need to copy the URL here and we're going to open a new tab and we're simply going to 
and we can see here that this is our widget that we've created. So what you want to do from here is you want to create an account and log in and see what happens. So for the purposes of this, I am just going to put in my details. As you can see here, it says our account was successfully created, so we can click OK. We then want to try logging with the account we just created. As you can see here, we've logged in successfully and we have our chat widget over here. We can select the users that we can talk to and we can even look at groups. Everything appears to be working all good and you have just finished creating your first JavaScript chat app using Comet Chat's widget. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again in the next one.